Wishing a very good morning to all and one present here. It's our immense pleasure welcoming and acknowledging you all here today. I am Adhas. I am Anand. Along with our friends, are here to present today's annual function on the topic GDP. GDP is a standard measure of value added created through the production of goods and services. I hope this day finds you in good spirit and ready for an enriching assembly. We have an exciting program lined up for you today that promises both to inform and to entertain. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, please stand up and take your positions. Put your right hand on your left shoulder and get ready for the pledge. I offer you, I offer you my studies, my studies, studies thoughts, thoughts, words, words, words and, actions and actions of this day. Of this day. Enlighten my mind, enlighten my mind strengthen my memories, strengthen my memory, and guide me, and guide me to do, to do what's right. What's right. Amen. Amen. Prayer is a soul conversation with the God. The basis of prayer is faith, not favor. It's universal, not individual. So let's start today's assembly with such conversation with God. मन मंदिर में सजी बिहारी मन मोहन तेरी छवि अति प्यारी 
बंसी बजैया रास रचैया तारन हार मेरे तुम ही के वैया तुमसे बड़ा कहा कौन कहैया श्री कृष्ण गोविंद हरे मुरारे हे नाथ नारायण वासुदेव श्री कृष्ण
Assessing a nation's well-being requires considering a wide range of factors beyond GDP that affects the quality of life and overall happiness of its citizens. The average life expectancy of a nation's population is a crucial indicator of well-being. It reflects the overall health care of a nation. Access to quality education and literacy rates are essential for personal development and economic growth. Future of GDP In the digital age and amid evolving economic structures, GDP alone may not be an adequate measure for a nation's progress. While GDP remains a valuable indicator of economic output, it has limitations in capturing the full spectrum of well-being and societal progress. GDP does not directly account for quality of life, including factors such as healthcare, education, and so societal progress. Conclusion. In conclusion, GDP is cornerstone of economic analysis and policy making. It plays a pivotal role in assessing a country's progress and economic performance. However, it, it's essential to recognize its limitations and consider a broader spectrum of factors while evaluating overall well-being of a society. We have all failed music speech. So here Nishi of our class is going to sing a Hindi song. <laughs>
place. So here, Swarita my class is going to play guitar. Please sir, please, don't take my land. I will find a way to get the amount you need. The authorities won't budge on the amount. If you can't pay it, you might face fines or work without any pay. Please sir, have some mercy on us. The tillers find themselves caught in a challenging predicament. They are burdened with the task of paying the Laban, a land revenue, which becomes increasingly difficult due to unfavorable agricultural conditions, particularly low irrigation in that year. 
The tillers face the prospect of fines or forced labour if they fail to meet their financial obligations to the Zaminda and the British authorities. The colonial system placed significant pressure on both Zaminda Rajendra Singh and the tillers, reflecting the inequities and hardships experienced under British rule in India. See too after independence. Mr. Rajendra Singh, the ongoing reform of the land settlement system is a crucial step towards addressing the issue of excessive land holdings, thereby ensuring equitable land distribution. Why we recognize the sudden changes are causing unease to us. Indeed, this may appear problematic, yet it represents a lot of efforts to redress the historical injustices faced by the marginalized dealers. Our aim is to elevate their economic circumstances. We thankfully em embrace the reforms, but practically concerns to surface in the absence of resources to cultivate the land. We are thinking how it will give benefit to us in long term, sir. There are challenges in reforming the land settlement system. This includes resistance from landowners, Difficulties in identifying excessive land holdings and the need for The plan faces administrative hurdles in implementing equitable land reforms and is encountering political opposition in some regions. Despite these challenges, this plan will lay the groundwork for future land reforms by marking its commitment to addressing historical injustices and achieving more equitable land distribution. It will serve as a valuable learning experience for subsequent land reform efforts. Scene 3, Handicraft before 1947. I plan to significantly reduce the taxes on the goods exported from our nation. With the aid of advanced technology, the prices will remain the market low. While it is second time, this handicraft is beautiful and deserves a vast customer base. The dream all you want, but take a good look around. Poverty is pervasive. Who will purchase your costly product when I can offer the similar item at a fraction of cost? Please consider buying this goods. I am just struggling to make my life good. My family depends on it and without earning, I fear I might not survive. My friend, I really want to support your business, but my circumstances mirror yours. I find it challenging to purchase in your good at this price when I can require similar item for a more modest sum. Beside my immediate basic need like food rather than decorative items. Be whatever you desire, but do not choose the path of an artisan like me, son. British rule in India had a profound impact on the indigenous handicraft industry. As British industrialization flourished, mass-produced goods from Britain flooded the Indian market. British policies favoured the import of British manufactured products and heavy taxation and trade restrictions were imposed on Indian handicrafts. This economic transformation played a significant role in eroding India's once thriving handicraft sector, contributing to its decline under British rule. Scene 4 after independence. I am committed to supporting your crafts. Subsidies will be provided to curb foreign competition, allowing your business to prosper. That's wonderful news, sir. Without reducing manufacturing costs, I can offer my goods at more affordable price while maintaining quality. My friend, now I can finally afford your good and the family circumstances have improved. While they may not be as affluent as they once were, we can still enjoy the product you create. British rule was a heavy blow to our craft, drowning it beneath foreign import, handmade certain, struggled a lot to find a place in the market with heavy flooded goods. The erosion of our cultural heritage within our craft left us fighting to preserve traditions amidst adversity. Our one starting artistry now bore the scars of British colonial influence. Scene 5 International Trade before 1947. This land teems with rich flora and fauna and boasting bountiful harvest. We shall claim it as our own. These illiterate people are the unworthy custodians of such a heritage. Henceforth, no taxes on raw material exports and finished goods in ports. In that case, we should bring our also machinery from Britain. By this way, we can establish our industries here and free ourselves from the dependence of the locals. Not so fast, my friend. I shall levy heavy taxes on raw material imports and finished goods exports to ensure your struggle to sustain your market. British policies prioritized the export of raw materials from India to feed British industries while imposing heavy tariffs and restrictions on Indian made goods. This not only stifled the growth of Indian industries but also resulted in a severe deindustrialization process. Millions of skilled people were pushed into poverty and India, once a global manufacturing powerhouse, became a net importer of finished goods, perpetuating economic dependency and underdevelopment. Scene 6 in 1991. I am in desperate need of funds. Our reserves are depleted and we are struggling to provide for our people. 
is considered as lending some financial assistance to survive. We are reluctant to ask the nation your ability to pay us is in doubt. I am willing to provide you loan, but there is a condition. What conditions are you proposing? You must undertake economic liberalization and globalization which includes removing trade barriers. I created those barriers to protect our domestic industries from international competition and nurture their growth within our nation. I can't betray them, but I am left with no choice, so I had to remove those trade barriers. Okay then, we will provide you the financial support you require. The decision to remove trade barriers in India was indeed a crucial step toward fostering economic growth and interna global integration. By dismantling these barriers, India opened up its market to international competition, which not only incentivized domestic industries to become more efficient, but also allowed consumers to access a wider variety of goods at competitive prices. Overall, the decision to remove trade barriers was instrumental in driving India's economic transformation and positioning it as a major player on the world stage. Thank you. Poetry is when emotion finds its thought and thought finds its word. So here, Supriya of our class is going to recite an English poem. In the land of the rising sun, a new economy has begun. With clicks and code, we pave the way for an India that's here to stay. A digital world so vast and wide opens doors that once were denied to the people of our great nation, empowerment through innovation. From farmers to traders, all can thrive in this economy that's come alive. Through e-commerce and online cash, we bridge the gap and make a splash. In rural areas, hope is found through telemedicine on the ground. In cities, skills are upgraded fast through online education that's built to last. This is the India we envision, a land of equal opportunity and mission, where technology solves the people's needs and empowers us to plant our own seeds. So let us march towards the future with digital tools as our suture. For an empowered India, we shall see a land of prosperity for you and me. Thank you. Dance is a rhythmic conversation between body and soul. So here some students of our class are going to do such conversation with our soul by a South Indian dance, dance style.